Alrighty, what is going on everyone? Welcome to another episode of Very Cold Lasagna, the podcast that houses a safe and open listening platform for casual, cold, and even the dumbest takes on the world of WWE, AEW, the NFL, and the wide world of pro wrestling and sports in general. I'm your host, Dylan Lasagna. Welcome to today's episode, episode number 59 of this freezing cold podcast. And it's once again time to open up that very cold fridge and grab that very cold lasagna that always tastes like that hot, hot pasta. That's in, well, e blue, blue, cold fridge. <laughs> but anyway, we got a lot to talk about today um, in this uh, NFL uh, super extravaganza show, as I like to call it, our weekly recap show. Um, I typically try to do this um, the Wednesday before um, the the week starts, the th- when Thursday Night Football kicks off, but there's just so much going on in the week. The, the week of the trade deadline that I was like, okay, um, I might as well just hold off on, you know, developing this episode, you know, recording this, and it's just because there's a lot of things going on, whether it's trades, injuries, major headlines, a lot of things have been happening, um, and it, I wanted to make it, you know, the most up-to-date as possible episode this week. Without, you know, anything else happening. So that being said, in today's show, we're going to be talking about uh, the week that was, week eight. We're also going to be talking about um, some quick things, uh, like a quick uh, NFL news roundup. Pretty much some of the things that happened during the trade deadline. Some of the major things that I personally saw during this uh, NFL trade deadline. Um, going back to week eight, by the way, we're going to going do our usual thing, the game highlights, winners and losers, players of the week, um, and then we're also be doing a little mini season review, like a mid-season review of this 2021 season, all of our winners and losers, and my standout moments of this, uh, this past season, this, uh, this ongoing season, and then obviously we're going to end the show with my picks uh, for week nine. Obviously, we already saw the action that happened on Thursday with uh, the New York Jets and the Indianapolis Colts. I will talk about that when I go into my Week 9 picks. If you like what you hear, if you like what you see here on Very Cold Lasagna, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell, listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, follow the show on social media, on Twitter and Instagram at Very Cold Lasagna. So let's get right into this jam-packed show. Obviously, um, even though with all the news that we had all throughout this week, preceding that, um, we've had a week that was week eight of the 2021 NFL season. Um, a lot of the teams that were coming out of the bye, uh, aka bye week hell from week seven, have come back um, for a little trick or treating on Halloween Sunday. Yeah, at least we got um, a little bit of a Halloween NFL Sunday for those of you um, that don't like to eat candy on you know halloween so we we have officially reached the halfway point of the 2021 nfl season um we had eight weeks of action and once this week was going to come and gone we're gonna we were gonna find out who was for real um who was well just like uh on halloween a cruel trick on our our minds and who was gonna be you know that one team that was like, huh, maybe they can make a, you know, like a stretch run to the postseason. So we're going to find out um, all that in week eight. So we kicked off the week with Thursday Night Football. Uh, the Green Bay Packers, the shorthanded Packers on offense, uh, upset the Arizona Cardinals. The then previously unbeaten Cardinals, 7-0, and no longer. Um, 24-21. to Aaron Rodgers didn't have Devontae Adams nor Alan Lazard due to COVID, but it was still no problem for him because he had Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon as well as Randall Cobb, and he pretty much went ballistic all game long, especially Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. And the Cardinals couldn't stop him. They couldn't stop him. And Kyler Murray struggled for much of the game. And, um, And when he got towards the end of the game, on the very last possession of the game, A.J. Green sold it. He sold the game for the Cardinals. He didn't know where the ball was. And the Packers intercepted Kyler Murray. And A.J. Green sold away their 7-0 record. So the Packers beat the Cardinals 24-21. And um, 
who knows? The Packers are, could be the real team to beat in the NFC. We'll see. It was like that for two seasons ago. Now, um, we'll see if it's for real. So then we get to the Sunday uh, action, and we start with the early morning slate. Uh, the Carolina the Carolina Panthers uh, beat the Atlanta Falcons 19-13. to um, Sam Darnold had to leave the game uh, late with a concussion. Uh, the Panthers' defense did um, make the Atlanta Falcons' offense out of sorts, out of sync all day long um, because Matt Ryan just couldn't find anybody. He just couldn't find <laughs> uh, pretty much nobody because Calvin Ridley um, took a leave of absence uh, for football due to focusing on his mental health, and I hope he uh, does well. And he couldn't find Kyle Pitts, and Kyle Pitts couldn't like adjust to life without Calvin Ridley either. So... The Panthers beat the Falcons 19 to 13. In the big upset of the day, the New York Jets beat the Cincinnati Bengals uh, 34 to 31 behind the the back of not Zach Wilson but Mike White. Yeah, the legend of Mike White. <laughs> yeah, the Bengals couldn't stop this dude for whatever reason. So, yeah, that that was something. Uh, once again, the Houston Texans got their ass whooped by another uh, playoff contender in the LA Rams. The LA Rams ran completely over uh, the Texans, thirty-eight to twenty-two, and this honestly was a shutout um, by the start of the fourth quarter. But um, I guess the defense um, in the fourth quarter didn't get the memo because they allowed twenty-two straight points to a Texans team that still had their starters for whatever damn reason <laughs> in the fourth quarter when the game was already said and done. I guess they just wanted to make a sad attempt to make the box score look like embarrassing and uh, make fantasy owners somewhat happy. Uh, the Buffalo Bills swept the season series against Miami, beating them 26 to 11. Um, Josh Allen was out of sorts for um, at least the first half, but he pulled the Bills offense together to pull away from the game from the Dolphins and he pretty much did Josh Allen things. Uh, Tua took Viola. Uh, meanwhile, he did okay for the most part, uh, but he did make a costly turnover in the last two minutes of the game, and that allowed Josh Allen to run it in and for a touchdown and pretty much sealed that baby. And then in Detroit, I don't even know if they're ever going to win a game this season. Like I said in my picks last week, this was their chance to literally win a game all season. And what we saw on Halloween, I don't think they're ever going to win a game. <laughs> I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to go 0 and 17. I really think that. I really think they're going to go 0 and 17 after what we saw uh, last Halloween Sunday because the Philadelphia Eagles, yes, this Philadelphia team whooped the Lions' candy asses 44 to 6, literally running down their asses with the run game. But my God, I don't. I, is Detroit ever gonna win a game? Like, just looking at their schedule, are they gonna win a game? <laughs> really, with the way they're playing now, I don't know, man. So down in Cleveland, uh, the land, uh, both uh, both QBs were playing like elderly fucks. Uh, the Steelers were able to pull away. Um, Thanks to Najee Harris and the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, beat the Cleveland Browns 15 to 10. And for Cleveland, man, it's looking like a very disappointing season. And um, we're going to be taking a look at, you know, a certain receiver that, well, has just gotten released um, from the Browns. But, man, they're really looking like the skid marks once again. So the Steelers beat the Browns 15 to 10. And we'll see if the Steelers can at least catch up to uh, the Bengals. And or the Ravens for you know trying to compete for that division title, and then the San Francisco 49ers beat the Chicago Bears 33 to 22. Um, you know Justin Fields had a spectacular TD scramble, but once again Bears football John struck once again for Chicago, and they allowed Jimmy G and Elijah Mitchell to literally run over them all fourth quarter. So the Niners beat the Bears 33 to 22. And the Tennessee Titans beat the Indianapolis Colts 34 to 31. Uh, Carson went through a bad, bad pick six deep in his own end zone. Like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? <laughs> like, he, like I know it, it was bad to take the safety, but you should have like you should have threw that shit out of bounds, dude. Um, but he he managed to uh, send the game to overtime thanks to Jonathan Taylor. But 
Carson Wentz threw another interception in overtime, and all the Titans had to do uh, was kick the game winner. And they have a a big tiebreaker over the Colts, and they swept the season series. However, the win came at the price for Tennessee because their MVP, Derrick Henry, uh, their running back, is pretty much likely gone for the season because he has a broken foot fracture, a.k.a. a Jones fracture, in his foot. And he's likely going to be out 6-10 to 10 weeks, which is essentially the rest of the regular season. So that's going to suck for the Titans. And it could be good news for the Colts, but that will depend on how well they do. So then we get into the afternoon games. Uh, man, I was wrong about this one. <laughs> I was really wrong about this one. The Jags sucked so bad, they let Geno Smith really run it back like it was his rookie year because he he let Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf run over this Jags defense all day long because the Seattle Seahawks beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 31-7. Like, did the Jags literally get stuck in London <laughs> and then flew all the way back, you know, at the last minute? Where were they? Where, where, where was this team? Like they, <laughs> man, I was so wrong. I was literally dead wrong about this game. But man, that that was terrible. That was terrible. So Seahawks beat the Jags thirty-one to seven. A critical pick six by the Patriots in the fourth quarter helped the Patriots beat the Chargers uh, 20, 27 to twenty-four. And you gotta wonder what is going on with that Chargers offense. Like this is the second game in the row that they struggled. Um, and this was coming out of their bye, too. So there's uh, some questions that has to be answered for this Chargers team. Um, in the Big Easy, the New Orleans Saints beat the Tampa Bay Bucks 36-27. Um, and this was a game, as uh, Joe Davis of the Fox broadcast team put it bluntly, who are these guys? Who are <laughs> this is literally a game of who are these guys. Like Because a large majority of the touchdowns I saw from the highlights were pretty much from guys that were, aside from Chris Godwin, Alvin Kamara, a large chunk of these scores were like from guys like, who? Who? So, the game's final moments saw Tom Brady throw a costly pick six, and um, he got sacked on the final play. And this was a really good uh, defensive performance by the Saints, and they proved once again that, well... They're Tom Brady's kryptonite, at least in the regular season. But just like with the Titans, uh, the Saints' win over the Bucks uh, came at a steep price because they lost Jameis Winston for the season to a torn ACL in the second quarter. So man, that's gonna be rough for the Saints if they won't have it. They want a chance to, uh, you know, somehow uh, supplant the Bucks for at least a division title. So down in the mile high, uh, the Denver Broncos beat the Washington football team 17-10 in a pretty uh, uneventful affair. Um, Melvin Gordon's two touchdowns were just enough to um, beat Washington in, yeah, like I said, a very uneventful affair. And Taylor Heineke, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> he, he tried to like lead a comeback charge. He tried to do a Hail Mary, but he completely sailed that thing um, into, into the crowd. He completely sailed the ball into um, way over the end zone. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Like, are you trying to get yourself benched? My God. So then in the Sunday night game, uh, the Dallas Cowboys beat the Minnesota Vikings 20-16. to And wow, like for a game that Dak Prescott didn't play, um, he was still recovering from the calf injury. He suffered from week six. Uh, Cooper Rush, the backup, he didn't certainly look like the backup because Kirk Cousins looked like the one that looked like the backup. And yeah, that's because Captain Checkdown, uh, primetime Kirk, returned at such a very bad time. And Cooper Rush somehow balled enough to beat Minnesota. So yeah, impressive win by the Cowboys. You know, they didn't have the, uh, their star QB, Dak, um, ready to play or like at least healthy enough to play. And Cooper Rush comes in, steps up to do enough to beat the uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Then in the Monday night game, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs pulls off a very unimpressive win against the New York Giants, 17-14. to um, That was because Patrick Mahomes struggled a lot, but the New York Giants struggled much more. <laughs> a lot of undisciplined penalties, uh, a lot of uh, mounting injuries on that receiver front. Um, and Mr. Daniel Penny's um, ghosting on the Giants' last chance to at least 
Tied a game with a field goal. Taking two consecutive sacks. Not good. So, overall, yeah, week eight was actually much more um, uh, good action-wise than week seven was. I guess it was um, um, all the teams that were on, on by the previous week, you know, at least trying to, you know, make up for the fact that, well, <laughs> well, um, we were on by and uh, we all knew you were upset about the, that fact. So, we want to make up to you with uh, some quality action there, Maggle. Yeah. So, it was a pretty good week. It was a pretty good treat for NFL fans. Oh, well, um, depending on how you look at it, depending on your team. So, overall, a uh, pretty good week. Um, now, let's get into some the winners and losers of, of week eight. And I got to start with the Green Bay Packers. Um, at least for now, <laughs> at least as I'm talking about it for right now. Um, in this game uh, against the Arizona Cardinals, they didn't have to uh, depend so much on Aaron Rodgers um, because... Look how Matt LaFleur, uh, their head coach, game planned around Aaron Rodgers. They used the running game um, of Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon to pretty much beat the Cardinals into the ground without J.J. Watt. Um, that opened up Jones and Dillon to pretty much run over, like run inside or even run outside uh, of the Cardinals' like defensive front. And it paid off. It really paid off. And the defense stifled Kyler Murray and put their offense out of sync for a good chunk of the game. And that included the game-saving interception for the Packers. And, well, a lot of that contributes to uh, A.J. Green not looking at the ball. But still, it's a very impressive performance and a very impressive play. Um, and you got to wonder if the Packers, um, whether what I'm about to get into next or not, um, is the team to beat? Well, we'll see about that. Uh, the New England Patriots, um, you know, Mac Jones looks like the best QB out of the rookie class, um, and the defense stepped up and made Justin Herbert look pedestrian for the second straight week. They got a critical pick six on him, and they were able to sack him multiple times. Um, while the Bills are still the team to beat in the AFC East, it's still their division to lose. Um, you know, don't count out the Patriots, at least in the wild card hunt, they could still make a push for that. And who knows, maybe in their week 13 showdown against the bills, maybe they can make a statement in that game. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, they came out of their bye without Prescott, um, and still managed to get out a win that <laughs> in the face of adversity, they came out with the W and you know, it was their tip is the typical narrative that even I believe myself that, Oh, if their backup QB is going to suck ass, um, he's going to pretty much, you know, choke the toad in this game. But he did enough. I mean, sure, he sailed some passes. Um, he mailed in a couple of throws. But in the end, when it mattered most, he he did enough. He helped his team. Um, and pretty much it was a, a team effort to beat the Vikings um, on the road. And, you know, with Washington struggling, um, the Eagles rebuilding, and, you know, the Giants, you know, stuck in whatever like whatever lane they're in the cowboys are for sure gonna win this nfc least they really are now as for some of the losers uh the new orleans saints i initially labeled them as winners because of their performance um against the bucks but man like i can't overlook um that loss of Jameis winston for the season and potentially potentially Beyond the season, because um, he only signed a one-year deal, and can the Saints really afford um, Jameis Winston for another season? Unless Winston is really willing to sign another one-year deal on the cheap. I mean, sure, he was inconsistent for at least half the season for the whole time he was there. Um, but I mean, at least he was at least running the the offense pretty pretty good. I mean, I guess. But now they have to figure out if Taysom Hill. Oh, I mean, Trevor Simeon starting on Sunday, but after that, get, after the game against the Falcons, they got to figure out if Taysom Hill can lead the charge again. And, well, when Taysom Hill does eventually get the starting job back, he'll have to do it again with, well, just Alvin Kamara by his side. And, well, the who are they players? Because, well, Michael Thomas is not coming back for the season. He's gone with the ankle injury. So, man. It's going to be real tough for the Saints. It really is. Um, 
the Indianapolis Colts. Um, don't let uh, the Thursday night game, um, you know, fool you. Uh, Sunday's game against the Titans this, in week eight was a golden opportunity for the Colts to make a statement on the Titans team. You know, the Colts won two straight um, against, you know, well, one one team at least, <laughs> one team at least that was you know had at least some playoff expectations in the 49ers. but you know, this is their opportunity um, for them to you know make some make some noise against Italian teams and get some revenge on them and at least split the season series. But Carson Wentz let it slip away with two costly interceptions, and well, if the Colts want to have any chance at winning the division, let alone making the playoffs. Um, Wentz has to make better decisions with the football, and they gotta hope um, the Titans free fall with Derrick Henry like a gone for the season. Uh, both of these teams don't have easy schedules um, for the rest of the way, so the Colts gotta start racking up some wins. The Detroit Lions. <laughs> what what more can you say about this Lions team? What more? <laughs> They, this was literally their last chance to win a game of the season. And I guess they forgot there was one on Sunday. They literally let they literally let, <laughs> they literally let Jalen Hurts. They literally let Boston Scott. They literally let like Jordan Howard, who hasn't been like relevant since his days in Chicago, run all over their, their asses. They Jared Goff was nowhere. <laughs> he, he he literally mailed passes all all day all day and man wh- while we knew the lines were gonna be bad like we knew jared goff was gonna suck we knew their o-line was gonna suck there's no talent on the receiving end uh there's no defense man we didn't know they were gonna suck if this bad like what is going on, man? Like, <laughs> we didn't know they were going to do this bad. Like, holy hell. It's like, and then, like I said, you look at the remaining schedule. They play the Vikings again. Like, sure, they're playing, they at least get the Vikings. Like, they, they're they their own chokers, but still, at least a little bit better than the Lions. They get the uh, the Vikings, the, the Bears, the Packers. Uh, they still have their own division. And then... Well, you gotta play Pittsburgh, um, the the Cardinals. Uh, who else do you? Have? Oh, Seattle. Uh, man, who else do you have to play? I think you have to still play some of the uh, in the a- a- AFC North. And uh, man, <laughs> regardless, it's like unless you know Pittsburgh or any one of the teams that you know plays down to their opponents. I don't see the the crying lions winning another game the rest of the way. They they they're bound. They're bound for 0 and 17. They really are bound for 0 and 17. Like holy crap. Now, time to hand out some uh awards, some players of the week, uh, and I got to give uh, my dues to uh at least for this week, uh week 8, uh to Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, for his um uh, performance against the Cardinals for leading the charge. Um and then for running backs, I gave it give it to um, you know close to home uh, the rookie running back for the 49ers Elijah Mitchell um, for his two TD I think it was two TDs but nonetheless uh, two TDs and pretty much gashing uh, the Chicago Bears defense um, in the second half and the New Orleans Saints defense for coming up clutch against uh, Tom Brady um, late in the game so man what a week eight. <laughs> Week eight was some interesting uh, things. There are a lot of interesting things that happened in week eight. Um, now, before I get into some of the news that happened um, after week eight, I want to talk about, um, like, give my mini review of this first half of the season. Um, I gotta say, um, as we reach the midseason uh, point of the NFL, as week nine come uh, begins, I gotta say this season so far. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. I mean, 2020, yeah, we had the COVID-induced uh, season, um, but it still had some good quality of play. And 2021, like, sure, like, in the last couple weeks, we've seen a lot of blowout games. Um, but in the first, at least, at least in the first five weeks, 
we've seen some pretty uptight games. We've really seen the level of competition um, pretty good. The only thing I've had a big nitpick on is the pass interference calls, as always, and the taunting, the, the new taunting rule. Like, wh- why are... <laughs> like, I didn't think it's going to be bad, but it's so bad. Like, you're they're taunting... The taunting rule is is so outrageous like it it's just comes off as natural like when when players are taunting it just comes off naturally it comes out of their mouths it comes out of their uh of their bodies naturally you they can't control that like how are they supposed to control how the how the players supposed to control that and if they if that's something they can't control and it's like oh flag flag yellow flag yellow flag it, it's so stupid it's so stupid like like if it's something like oh i'm wiping my ass uh with the football or you know i'm pulling my i'm pulling my tights down and showing everyone my butt and yeah that's that's understandable that's, that's a reasonable flag that's a reasonable ejection um but if it's you know little, little trash talk here and there but it's it's that's so stupid. That is so dumb. Like, let these players have fun. Like, why do we have to continue to be in the no fun league, um, Mr. Goodell, Mr. Uh, Mr. Referees? It's it's so stupid. It is so stupid. But nonetheless, the quality of play um, outside of that has been pretty good. It has been pretty good. The games have been pretty good. Um, a lot. There's been some good uh, game of the year candidates. Uh, by the way, which uh, I can't get to at the moment, but I'm pretty sure I'll have some um, towards the end of the season and towards uh, the off season when we get there. Now, um, to clu- conclude this uh, segment, um, I'm going to talk about some of my midseason winners, losers, and standout moments. Um, obviously, uh, for the winners, I guess over the Arizona Cardinals. Um, yes, as much as I hate to do this to uh, my division rivals. Um, you know, I gotta give credit where credit is due. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury has done a good job of leading this team to a 7-0 start. Um, you, you know, Kyler Murray has done, you know, significantly better. Um, in an offense that, you know, for the better part of seven weeks, looked completely unstoppable. Obviously, they ran into that wall against the Packers that had played much better than them in that Thursday night game. And, you know, a defense with uh, J.J. Watt and Chandler Jones um, played pretty good football in those in that seven-game winning streak. And now it's time for them to, um, you know, figure things out in the second half because they don't have uh, a J.J. Watt for the rest of the season. And, you know, injuries are starting to mount up. And, you know, A.J. Green, AJ Green just hit the COVID list. So, and Kyler Murray has his own ankle injury. So... It's going to be some interesting things for this Cardinals team as, um, you know, they can't let up if they want to have a chance at a top seed in the playoffs and potentially the division title in the NFC West. Uh, the Green Bay Packers, you know, ever since they lost uh, to the New Orleans Saints in AEW land in Jacksonville in week one, uh, they've been on their own six game winning streak and they've had some uh, good quality wins, including the Thursday nighter that I keep mentioning against Arizona. <laughs> Uh, and pretty much the big three, Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, and Aaron Jones have been playing at a very good level, and, you know, the sporting cast has been pretty damn good. So, obviously, they're going to run away with the division, and maybe this time, maybe this time, maybe this time, they'll uh, fin- they'll finish uh, as the champions of the conference, but, you know, it's going to be very competitive. And then the Dallas Cowboys. Um, for as much as the common folk love to brag uh, on Jerry Jones and the Cowboys, um, you know, for doing stupid shit or losing like big games or choking it up, uh, they've been playing very good football. You know, Dak and Zeke, you know, they're back to playing at great levels. Um, and CD Lamb is having a good second year. Um, and you know, they've been winning games um, that they they are typically losing um, in previous years. And, you know, they also went out their way um, to hire Dan Quinn, um, previously the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, that hiring has been uh, pretty good for them. That Their defense has been doing much better than in previous years. Sure, their secondary still could use some work. Um, but that front seven has been playing much better. 
in the last two years. And obviously, like I said before, the the, the Cowboys are probably going to run away uh, with the NFC East like, <laughs> like the last time they won it. Um, but who knows? Maybe they can do more than that. Um, they could do much more than that. And then the LA Rams. Um, I guess they're really going all in. They're trying to go all in on trying to host the Super Bowl in their fancy new stadium that technically is theirs and not the LA Cl- well sorry the LA Chargers um so their offense looks en- energetic as ever Matt Stafford I guess was really the missing piece that they needed for guys like Cooper Cup uh Robert Woods and uh Tyler Higby pretty much um all those guys and Obviously, the defense has been doing their own end of the bargain, um, especially Aaron Donald, and now he's getting a Von Miller. Um, they're they're going to be a big, big uh, threat in the NFC. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe they'll be the one. They'll be the one. So those are my winners. Now for the losers of the midseason, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, yeah, I didn't like. Who expected them to? You know, pretty much shit the bed. Um, sure, they're four and four, but like their their play has pretty much fallen off. It's pretty much fallen off in the last uh, well, pretty much like all season. Like Patrick Mahomes is playing more erratic and more careless than ever. He's pretty much like trying to find the open guy all the damn time. He just doesn't want to, you know, take the hit or eat the sack. You know, there's nothing wrong with the dude. There's nothing wrong with taking the sack. There's nothing wrong with it. And obviously the secondary has been worse than ever under Steve Spagnola. He I don't, I don't know I don't think he can even fix it. Like something is up. Something is up with this uh Chiefs team. Uh the offensive the offensive line that, you know, that was a big problem in the Super Bowl against the Bucks. It's not living up to the expectations. You know, they revamped this offensive line by signing a bunch of uh known guys um, around the league and it's still not living up to you know its name it's still not doing their part in all in all they, they have a 4-4 record and they don't look like a a playoff contender they really don't they look like a team that is going to get boat raced by one of these uh, teams like the buffalo bills or the baltimore ravens in the playoffs so overall the, the chiefs kind of disappointing where where they're at and is it uh the curse of losing the super bowl maybe but i don't know maybe the confidence of Mahomes, or maybe um the pressure of you know living up to that humongous uh 100 or 500 million dollar contract is getting to him um the detroit lions obviously i <laughs> i think i I've, I've said enough about the lions but um you know, it, I all I can say is like they were pretty competitive in the first guy five games, but I think they started to realize that you know we're 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 staying in the games too much, and um, yeah, we, we we want that overall uh, number one overall pick now. So let's you know let's let's ease it up a little bit. Let's ease it up a little. So yeah, uh, the Miami Dolphins. Um, you know they over I. Uh, I don't know. I, I think they had this big obsession of really trying to trade for Deshaun Watson that they forgot about Tua Tuka Viola. They really forgot that, you know, we 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 spent the number five, the number 6 overall pick, I think it was, the number 5th or 6th overall pick in the 2020 draft for this dude, um, you know, to be the guy and yet the next season or at least in the off season the following off season, there's already talks about the Dolphins trading potentially for Deshaun Watson, and even with all the the legal stuff with Watson, <laughs> the Dolphins are still in uh, are still in the bubble for him. Like damn, like goddamn, they spent way too much time on that, and then they also overspent on certain players during the free agency, and those players are not. Um, living up to the expectation and the front office has failed to, you know, protect, you know, their quarterback. The, the offensive line is horrible. Tua is getting hit. He's getting sacked so much that who knows? 
maybe he doesn't want to play for Miami. Maybe he's noticing, you know, that they don't want me. Maybe, like, I'll I'll mail it in too and add all that together. They got a one seven record, and you gotta wonder what's going through Brian Flores' head right now. And then the Washington football team, like they came into the season with one of the most fearful defensive lines that came into the league last season, led by the second overall pick from last year, Chase Young. And then in the offseason, they tried to add some things on offense, like Ryan Fitzpatrick and Curtis Samuel. But pretty much nothing has gone right. Uh for the defending NFC each champions. Ryan Fitzpatrick is still injured. Um, who knows if he's going to come back this season. Um, and then Taylor Heineke. Um, you know he's trying to follow up his. Uh, you know his one off uh, game. Um, against the Bucks In January. But you know he's trying to do too much. With a pretty much depleted and unhealthy team. Uh, and the defense is pretty much underperforming. Under Ron Rivera. And speaking of Ron Rivera, he's not coaching his team to, you know, the expectations of, you know, trying to win these games. So, overall, I'm not sure if Ron is the guy to lead that team. Or they have to get um, him some more help. They really got to get him some more help. And then some a couple of standout moments to me during the season was, uh, well, more heartbreak for the Lions because... Uh, Justin Tucker hit this holy shit field goal in week three, that 66-yarder to beat the Lions, well, courtesy of a doink, that sent it in to make it good. And then, obviously, the kicking struggles of week five where pretty much almost every kicker um, missed at least one field goal. Like, damn, holy shit. Uh, Tom Brady getting a 600 touchdown that a fan almost took away (laughs) in week seven against the uh, terrible, terrible Bears. And, um, you know, obviously the um, the game ceiling interception on Kyler Murray in the end zone to pretty much end the Cardinals' undefeated streak in pretty much in a snap. So those that was my midseason review. Um, for, like, overall, I hope to see, you know, some good things to come in the second half of the season. But um, overall, the first half was pretty good. It was pretty, pretty good. I was pretty impressed um, by the quality of play um, outside of the stupid shit. Um, in week eight. So before we talk about the picks for week nine, um, a little bit of news roundup. Um, before we close off the show. Um, obviously I mentioned before, uh, Derrick Henry is going to be out six to ten weeks with the foot fracture that he suffered in the Colts game, and the Titans to counteract this loss, um, they signed longtime running back. Yeah, yeah, they signed a uh, veteran running back, Adrian Peterson. Yeah, somehow. He still got them fresh legs. He somehow has them fresh legs. And obviously I mentioned Jameis Winston uh, being out for the season with the torn ACL um, that he suffered in the second quarter against Tampa Bay. Um, well wishes to um, Mr. Winston there. And uh, hopefully whether it's with the Saints or with another team, he can, you know, at least find some footing. Um, you know, get hopefully a team takes a chance on him. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, now the now former Broncos linebacker Vaughn Miller has been traded to the LA Rams for a 2022 second uh, and third round pick, and I don't know what this means for the Broncos, but they're either going to rebuild that defense or rebuild in general. But for the Rams, they're going all in to host that, try to host that Super Bowl in their stadium. Uh, the Chiefs acquired a linebacker Melvin Ingram from the Steelers for a 2022 sixth round pick. So they pretty much got him on the cheap. Um, and this was the big, big breaking news um, that happened midweek. That's why I held off this episode. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. My player of the week from week eight tested positive for COVID. Yeah. And he had a lot of interesting things to say um, on the Pat McAfee show. Um, I don't not I don't know like the whole context of it. Um, he pretty much said he, he he didn't lie. He didn't lie about being vaccinated. Um, but he knew, he said he was doing some research. He did research, um, but he like he didn't want to take it because he was allergic. Pretty much like kind of like making excuses or whatnot. And it's just like just admit you don't want to be vaccinated. Just don't admit it. Uh, just admit you don't want to be vaccinated. At least with you know when it came to Kyrie Irving or Cole Beasley or. I don't know, Andrew Wiggins. At least they were willing to admit, like, 
for you know all the publicity that they were getting uh they were getting the shit they were getting about being unvaxxed they were willing to admit that they were willing to admit that but aaron Rodgers, well the interview he had with pat mcafee and don't get me wrong i like pat mcafee show i like him on smackdown but i don't know aaron Rodgers came out as kind of bullish uh trying to explain himself um for testing positive about COVID or for COVID and you know him kind of lying about it to the NFL. So he's going to be out Sunday against the chiefs and, um, Oda Beckham Jr. R- like I said, released, uh, from the Browns. Uh, he was trying to be traded or the Browns were trying to trade him at the tra- trade deadline, but no team wanted to take on his, uh, big, big contract. And, I, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't either if I was the Niners. So that was your news roundup. Um, there was a lot of things to take in. Um, obviously, not a lot happened at the trade deadline. Not a lot of big moves outside of Von Miller and Mel- Melvin Ingram. Um, but all I know is the 49ers did trade for a um, a Texans uh, edge rusher, which definitely will help, at least. But... Um, Overall, I mean, nothing that interesting, but obviously the big headlines with Aaron Rodgers um, testing positive for COVID, and he's going to be out um, once again ruining the State Farm uh, wet dream. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that was your big news for um, uh, the week. So now let's talk about week nine. Uh, we've reached the start of the second half of the season. Uh, eight weeks are in the books, and there are now 10 more to go. That's right, right? Eight, like we reach week nine, <laughs> nine more to go, right? Math, help me. <laughs> kind of not my strong suit, but you get the point. So we know at this point who's the cream of the crop, uh, who are the fluky flukes, and who's pretty much outright terrible. And well, there's the Detroit Lions, who are on bye this week, so we don't get to see them be well the Detroit Lions. So obviously, speaking of Detroit Lions on bye. We have the we have the Seahawks, uh, the Washington Football Team, and the defending Super Bowl champion, the Bucks, also on by uh, this week. So, besides those teams being on by, um, Week Nine does present us with a variety of games um, that, well, the previous weeks um, have yet to present us. Uh, games that could be traps uh, for playoff contenders, uh, games for those in need of a bounce back win or a well a win in general. Uh, for or games that for teams looking to continue their recent success after getting a, a win, so let's talk about this week nine. Uh, let's start off with the Thursday night game that just happened um, a couple days ago, and that was the Indianapolis Colts beating the New York Jets, uh, forty-five to thirty, bouncing back from that uh, bad bad uh, loss to the Tennessee Titans on in week eight. And honestly, this was a second straight week. Thursday night game with, which was pretty much a poop game. It was pretty much shit. And I, I just asked before the game, like, how are the Jets? How are the Giants? How are these New York teams that are pretty much shit still have primetime games? Like, I get it. It's the New York media. It's like one of the biggest, if not the biggest media market in in the world, in the United States. But can we just at least look at the fact that the Jets and the Giants suck so much that they don't deserve a primetime game regardless of, you know, their their media market. Like, they don't. They do not. Especially when it's on, on it's simulcasting on, two, on three different platforms. They were on Fox, they were on NFL Network, and they were on Prime Video. Unlike the New York Giants, they were on NFL Network for their Thursday night game. And there's, they also have two. They also had two. Monday night games on ESPN on national television and the next one they're going to be on they're likely going to get whooped by the Tampa Bay Bucks so anyway just a little side ramble on that so in this game Matt uh not Matt Rule but uh Jets backup Mike White uh you know he seemed primed to follow up on his uh success against the Bengals and he he looked, he looked that way. You know, he got a touchdown pass, you know, responding to Naeem Hines' uh, opening drive touchdown. Um, and, you know, Mike White threw a touchdown pass um, 
in the in the Jets opening possession of the game, but he suffered a hand injury um, you know, when he took a hit to the ground. And that forced them out of the game. And you know, that forced in Josh Johnson to take the reins of the offense. And well, unfortunately for the Jets, they couldn't move the damn ball. And that resulted in the in the Colts, you know, on the backs of John Taylor and Naeem Hines. Uh, Carson Wentz pretty much powered through the Jets, but you know, they had to survive a somewhat last minute comeback scare from Mr. Johnson and the Jets. Like and the the Colts win forty five to thirty. Like, how did these how did they allow this to happen in the the last stages of the game like how how this is like what happened with the 49ers in week one against Detroit like how do you let this happen like sure you got the win but how do you make this a near two score game like I do not get it so so then uh, let's get into the Sunday uh, slate of games uh, in regards to the picks Um, the Atlanta Falcons are traveling to New Orleans to take on the Saints Uh, both teams are coming off um are coming into this game, um, losing two uh, two big players. Uh, the Falcons don't have Calvin Ridley still, um, and Jameis Winston is gone for the Saints. Uh, it's going to be a game of adjustments for both teams. Um, and you no, know, I'm going to go on a limb here and pick the Falcons um, to upset the Saints because we don't know what the offense is going to look like for both teams. But at least with the Falcons, you know, you still have Matt Ryan. And sure, you don't have like a downfield threat um, in Calvin Ridley, um, at least for the time being. But you still have a potential, you know, breakout tight end in Kyle Pitts. You still got a a resurgent uh, Cordell Patterson and a bunch of no name receivers. But so at least you have some some things going for you on offense. In contrast to the Saints, where you have Trevor Simeon. And the only thing you also have going there is Alvin Kamara. So I'm going to go on a limb here and pick the Falcons to win this one. Uh, the Denver Broncos travel to Jerry's world to take on the Dallas Cowboys. And while the Broncos may have Jerry Judy back and are definitely going to feature him more, um, they just traded away Von Miller on defense and uh, the Cowboys, um, you know, granted Dak, pra- Dak plays on Sunday. Um, yeah. The Cowboys are just going to have too much talent all around for the Broncos to overcome. So I'm taking the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, new, the New England Patriots travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Um, the Panthers uh, are likely going to continue their free fall. Um, so even though they're 4-4, four four, they're not a good 4-4. Four four. Uh, meanwhile, the Patriots are likely to continue their recent winning surge. Matt Jones is still going to, you know, like do his part and... Let the defense do their their part as well. You know, a team effort, a team effort, effort there, Maggle. Um, so whether it's uh, Sam Darnold or PJ Walker under center, um, this Panthers team is not not like what it was um, in the first few weeks of the season. So I'm going with the New England Patriots. The Minnesota Vikings take on the Baltimore Ravens. Um, the Vikings are coming off their typical uh, Cousins primetime showcase, and but the Ravens. Coming off the bye and coming off uh, their dud against the uh, Cincinnati Bengals in Week 7. Yeah, I think they're going to get rid of that stench uh, more so than the Vikings. Expect Lamar Jackson and company to pretty much run over a Vikings defense that was exposed pretty much by, yeah, the backup Cooper Rush in prime time. So the Cleveland Browns, uh, fresh off releasing Odell Beckham Jr., take on the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. Um, the Bengals are coming off their own stinker against the Jets. Um, but despite that, you know, they still have uh, a, a crap ton of talent with Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, and, you know, a defense that's doing still solid overall. And, you know, they'll be able to bounce back against a Browns team that has fully reverted back into skid mark mode. Yeah. So I'm going with the Bengals. Uh, the Buffalo Bills travel to AEW land to take on the Jaguars. I mean, it's no question that, you know, unless the Bills, you know, really, uh, you know, let down, <laughs> let down on this game, you know, they overlook this game. I think the Bills are all around going to squash a Jag- Jaguar team like they're jobbers. Like, you know, they're going to treat um, the Jaguars like they, you know, the Bills should treat AEW. So, 
The Bills are going to squash the Jags that's been super out of sync coming out of the bye and will pretty much stay that way after this game. Uh, the Houston Texans travel to Miami to take on the Dolphins in the in the we don't want Deshaun Watson, but we want to win a game game. So this this team, for all the disappointment uh, and for all the lack of execution uh, that Brian Flores has done all season long, I think the Dolphins, you know, they have enough talent to win this one, you know, unless they flub it up so bad that they let the Texans win it. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders return from their bye to take on the New York Giants. Uh, the the Giant, uh, not the Giants, the the Raiders. Um, you know, they're fresh off their another another off field issue with Henry Ruggs getting arrested and his career likely ending with um, a a severe severe case of DUI that resulted in a death of another person. And man. <laughs> The, this Raider season has been full of turmoil and not in a good way, like not in a very, very good way. Um, but they can't let this uh, latest uh, off field issue cost them a prime opportunity to you know, distance themselves from the pack of uh, the Chargers and the Chiefs um, to take uh, take possession, like take good possession of the AFC West um, because they're going to be facing a Giants team that's severely lacking in the offensive, um, you know. So, guys like Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, Brian Edwards, uh, and Josh Jacobs, they got to step up for Derek Carr um, to help the team win this game. So, I'm going with the Raiders. Um, you know, I'm a bigger guy, but I think the Raiders are, are still better than the Giants. Now, we get to the afternoon slate of games. Uh, the LA Chargers uh, travel to the city of brotherly love that has been kind to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Justin Herbert's got to eventually shake off this growing pain of you know losing back-to-back games um in the ravens and the patriots and i think this game should be the game that takes that step uh, you know for all the issues the Chargers have been having with stopping the run and stopping tight ends and you know their own offensive problems you know they should have no problem beating a very flawed eagles team that even though they pretty much ran over detroit literally you know they were playing detroit so um i should have no problem taking the chargers team winning here and, and what was the matchup of the week? The Green Bay Packers take on the Kansas City Chiefs in the State Farm Wet Dream Bowl that is likely never going to happen. <laughs> uh, like I said before, Aaron Rodgers uh, tested positive for COVID and is not going to be um, uh, playing on Sunday against Patrick Mahomes. And instead, the Packers will be sending out Jordan Love for his first NFL start. And, you know, this... Some people will say this is going to be a downgrade for Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones. And, you know, they have a valid reason to say so. Um, for me, I think it could be an opportunity for Jordan Love to show whether or not he's going to be the guy to succeed Rodgers uh, Roger, um, when whether he gets traded uh, when it co- in terms of Rodgers, when Rodgers gets traded or when Rodgers retires. So, that being said, this is... Jordan Love's first real opportunity to see what he has, to see if he's the guy in Green Bay. And nonetheless, the Chiefs are pretty much going to win this thing. Um, you know, they're still struggling offensively and defensively, but this is a game where they pretty much can't shit the bed because, you know, there's no Aaron Rodgers in this game. Um, the, the whole offense for Green Bay is going to be, like, out of sorts. So this is going to be... A game for the Chiefs that they have to treat as a get-right game on offense. They got to torch the Packers at home. Um, so I'm taking the Chiefs. Then in in Santa Clara, the 49ers host the Arizona Cardinals, um, the now 7-1 Cardinals. And I got to be honest, it's going to be very hard to predict what's going to happen um, in this game. Is Kyler Murray going to play or is Colt McCoy going to play? Like Who's, who's going to be the quarterback that the 49ers face um, this time around? And unfortunately, we won't know close to game time. Um, but at least what I do know is that at least the 49ers do have a little bit of a chance to beat them this time around. Um, we saw like in week five that even though Kyler Murray was healthy, um, the 49ers defense was able to limit Murray and that offense. Um, to Even though it was just 17 points, and at least they were uh, Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins connected on that little bomb, um, it it was more so that the Niners 
offense and Kyle Shanahan couldn't uh, fully take advantage of opportunities. And it was Trey Lance's first start. And, you know, he was limited by the dumb play call. So, nonetheless, I do think the Niners have a little bit of chance this time around. I mean, for as much as, you know, Jimmy Garbage Pail um, is shit, you know, he give, he presents, you know, somewhat of a fighting chance to win. And hopefully Kyle Shanahan trusts him enough to, you know, beat them. And, you know, if Kyle Murray starts, uh, his mo- his mobility is going to be limited because of the ankle injury he suffered in the Packers game. And, you know, he shouldn't be moving around. He shouldn't be running around in circles um, out of the pocket to make it any worse. And so he's probably going to be a pocket quarterback for this game. And even then, his arm, his throwing ability is going to be very dangerous against this team. Um, if Colt McCoy starts, well, we saw, even though in that upset by by the Giants in Seattle last, last year, um, yeah, this Colt McCoy didn't do good at all in that game. So this offense is going to be totally downgraded. And whether it's Kyler Murray or Colt McCoy starting, the cards are already without AJ Green, um, who's on the COVID list. On defense, JJ Watt is out for the season uh, with the shoulder injury, and the Cardinals could be without DeAndre Hopkins too, with the hamstring injury. So this is the 49ers' best opportunity. Uh, to get the revenge win, split at least split the season series with the Cardinals. Um, just as long as Jimmy G replicates his success from last week against the Bears. So, my gut says 49ers, but who knows? It could be Cardinals too. So, it's very hard to predict. Then in the Sunday night game, it's a Super Bowl rematch between the Tennessee Titans and the LA Rams. Um, I'm going to go with the LA Rams because it's it's just so hard to predict what the Titans is going to be without Derrick Henry. Um... I do know is that they're just going to have to throw the ball a lot against a more electric Rams offense. Like they're not they're at least for this week, like even though they have Adrian Peterson, um, Ryan Tannehill is not going to have that benefit of, you know, running, running the ball down uh, the Rams throat, especially with Aaron Donald on the underside. Um, I think the first, the first game without Derrick Henry is going to be one with growing pains, you know, and the Rams are just going to pull out all the stops on Tannehill. On this one. And then in the Monday night game, the Monday night closer. Oh, yeah. 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 Are you ready for this one? Yeah. Are you ready for some Monday night Bears football? Yeah. Bears football, John, on a Monday night. Yeah. The Chicago Bears take on the Pittsburgh Steelers for some prime time. Monday night Bears football, John. Yeah. I mean, let's not get wrong. Justin Fields did have a solid, show to, solid showing against uh, the 49ers last week, but the, the Bears are not going to have that same benefit when they play in the Steelers. And um, TJ Watt on defense. Yeah. The Steelers front seven is much tougher um, than the 49ers. Don't get, don't get it wrong. And <laughs> the Bears shitty offensive line is going to have a much tougher task to protect Justin Fields. And Big Ben is still washed hack, but the Steelers, you know, are 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 still as a little bit better than right now than Bears football. Yeah, Bears football, John. Yeah, Maggle. You ready for some Bears football on a Monday night, Maggle? You better be. Yeah. So those are my week nine picks um for this coming week. Um obviously the Thursday night game happened, but uh, let me know how you feel about these picks. Um you probably have different picks than mine. But let me know how you feel, whether it's on, on the YouTube comments or social media comments, however you can. But that is it for this episode of Very Cold Lasagna, this uh, NFL uh, extravaganza recap show um, filled with all the news. Um, after the trade deadline, the trade deadline fallout, um, Aaron Rodgers testing positive for COVID. He's not going to be playing uh, against the Chiefs on Sunday. And obviously, week eight, everything that happened there. Uh, my midseason mini review and obviously my picks. So, what do you think about everything that was talked about in this show? Let me know. Let me know. But that is it for uh, today's episode. I am your host, Dylan Lasagna. Thank you for tuning in to this fine, fine episode. Um, follow me on social media however you can and listen to the show and watch the show however you can. And as always, keep that lasagna very cold in the fridge with your takes on the world of pro wrestling and sports. Cold as ice, you know, in the fridge, tasty as a hot, hot lasagna like 
Garfield. Like Garfield. We should all eat lasagna like Garfield. But anyway, that is it for today's show. I'll see you all again for uh, the week nine recap. Hopefully, but uh, nothing, no crazy news. But hopefully, in the same time, same as always. And then we'll also be talking week ten picks too. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. Peace out.